Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. Now, Auditor General Garmini Vijay Singh has said he would have had the opportunity of assisting the bond scam investigations if the National Audit Bill had been introduced. When asked by News First, Vijay Singh has said the Attorney General had approved the National Audit Bill. The introduction of a National Audit Bill was one of the main campaign promises of the Yahapalnir government, which they pledged to accomplish during the first 100 days in office. The 19th Amendment to the Constitution, which was adopted on the 15th of May 2015, paved the way for independent commissions, including the Audit Commission. Members were also appointed to the Commission. However, Parliament has so far failed to take any action to move the National Audit Bill forward. The 19th Amendment to the Constitution clearly states that it is the responsibility of the President to ensure the function of the independent commissions. However, it was the Prime Minister's office that took on the responsibility of the National Audit Bill and obtained Cabinet approval. This is where the delays began. A lot of time was taken because they amended this bill on 23 separate occasions. This commission has been functioning for two years and the monthly expenditure is around 2 million. It employs 21 people. However, we cannot do anything productive for the nation. We have received information that the audit bill has been completed by the legal draftsman, signed off by the Attorney General and has been handed over to the Prime Minister's office. We believe that it will be submitted for cabinet approval during the next cabinet meeting. I try not to level my finger at politicians. There are a group of corrupt secretaries who want to delay this act. We spent many years perfecting this act, who wrote the first letter to amend it or destroy it. It came from the Ministry of Finance. The amendments that were made because of this destroyed the essence of the bill. We investigated and created a report on the coal issue and the billions in losses. However, they haven't debated it yet. We created a report on the 15 billion loss caused due to the importation of rice. No one is talking about this. We have also formed a report about the Gim River project. It is something similar to the silk cloth case. We have reports on the creation of the DA Rajapaksa Museum's construction. In the bond scam, we clearly identified that a loss was caused due to mistakes made by the governor of the central bank. If the audit bill was active, we could have immediately issued the surcharge for the losses caused. You could imagine something like that because I see no reason for delays. The central bank treasury bond scam, how much has it cost the government or the country we call Sri Lanka? Now, you heard the sentiments of the Auditor General in the news item before. Now, in his report right here, which he compiled for COPE, he says that the immediate loss following the 27th of February 2015 bond auction and the 29th of March 2016 bond auction was just over 1.6 billion. That's 1.6 billion rupees. And he says the long-term loss as the bonds mature is astronomical. With me is Fawaz Shaukatali. Fawaz, tell us more about this loss. Well, um, as you said, uh, in his report, the Auditor General pointed out that uh, the loss, the immediate loss, um, was uh, for the two bonds, the 27th of February 15 and the 19th of March 16 bond auctions, uh, the immediate loss was 1.67 billion rupees and that the, uh, the loss would actually be higher when one considered the maturity dates. And um, uh, Zofik? Yes, Fawaz. Fawaz, I would like to hand over a report, a set of reports to you. This report, this set of reports, is in fact the entire set compiled by the Auditor General into the losses. That's, uh, that's pretty heavy. It is, Fawaz. And it that's is. just the tip of the iceberg, right? That's there. just the tip of the iceberg. But now, these um, losses, yes. we have two expert opinions on how these losses were caused. The loss is actually even higher. And who says this? The former chairman of the Bank of Ceylon, Rosary Pala Tenekon. That all what Sena is trying to make out is completely a distortion of the real facts. Yeah. He has given seven instances of uh, transactions. Seven, seven bonds. Seven bonds, yeah. which he has transacted with the Employees Provident Fund. 
Yeah. And this information yeah. is extremely useful to us because they give the what is called the ISN IN number. Yes. It is the number that is attributed to a particular bond. Yeah. So therefore, all the information in relation to such a bond yeah. will be available to be retraced at any given point of time. He has said that he has sold 2,000 million worth of bond, 2 billion, yeah. to the EPF yeah. under a certain given uh, ISN number yes, yeah. and the, the, the EPF has bought it at 2,431 million. What he has failed to disclose is yeah, yeah. at what price did they buy these bonds? That he has not revealed in, in this, uh, in in this, this analysis. internet analysis. They made on that transaction alone 560 million rupees profit. To do this, they have paid bribes to people in the EPF. They have prevented the EPF from making their own bids in the primary market. They have stopped them from coming into the primary market. They, they have asked them to wait till they purchase it at a lower price and sell it at a higher price to them. Perpetual treasurers. There are seven transactions Perpetual Treasuries Limited entered into with the Employees Provident Fund following the first auction. The tainted profit from that was 26.318 billion rupees. This is from the seven transactions done with the EPF. Thereafter, they entered into six transactions with the Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation. The tainted profits from that is 4.1 billion rupees. They entered into four transactions with the National Savings Bank. The deficit between the purchase price and the sale price is 819 million rupees. 26.318 billion to Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation, 4.1 billion to NSB plus the 819 million loss. The total loss is around 31 billion rupees. It must be said, this 31 billion rupees has not been recorded in the accounts. How much do they have in their frozen accounts? 12 billion rupees. They have misled the auditors of the central bank and withdrawn more than 20 billion rupees. May I? Well, there you have it, Mr. Gusikipala Tennakon and Kirti Tennakon both expressing their opinion on how the losses were caused to the EPF especially and other state institutions. Now, that is how the public money was in fact robbed. I use that word robbed because to emphasize on that act. Now, for us, the previous regime was sent packing because the people stood up against corruption and th that regime faced a barrage of allegations related to corruption. Yes, let's, let's go through some of these. Uh, mansions were built in Malwana, in Browns Hill, Martyra and in Gampa. But when cases were filed, there were no owners for these properties. Zulfik? Yes, Fawaz, and then don't forget the embezzlement of the Samurdi Fund. Now those funds were used to purchase GI pipes and then the person who was accused of it immediately got hospitalized when he was remanded and then after he was released he started walking again. Let's not forget the passports. One person was found to be in possession of two passports and he was immediately given bail as well. For us don't forget one individual who was at one of the most prominent positions in government had to count the bars of his cell because of the silk cloth incident following the instructions of his superior. And then we come to the infamous MIG deal where payments were made to a mysterious third party for fighter jets. Now this entity has disappeared from the face of this earth. Then for us we come to another important incident that is the establishment of a private maritime security service. This was established taking away the revenue generated by a well-known and respected Sri Lankan Navy and then there were also allegations that this private maritime security service was established to train mercenaries. And then finally there was Mihin Lanka which was launched and now is bankrupt. Sri Lankan Airlines is nearing bankruptcy. For us don't forget these two words land grab. Let's start off by saying that the property on which the former army headquarters was located in was given for a hotel development project and now there's a big hotel there and then there were also lands that were given based on a person's whims and fancy for the port development project as well indeed and then of course there was uh, public funds were looted claiming hotel projects will be launched 
for us, there's a bit more to that because some people fail to even declare how they generated their money. And one of the key ex uh, explanations given was that this was from their grandma's bag of gems. <laughs> a new government was elected driving out the old, promising to stop corruption and waste. But what happened? Zofik. Well, for us, first uh, deals were reached by these individuals with these rogues. And if you start moving on this way, the connection with a person called Lokuitan. Now, this man is alleged to have been, account, been the account holder of all Dubai bank accounts that belong to the Wajapaksas. But before 2015, for us, the opposition questioned, are they using gold to construct these expressways in Sri Lanka? But after coming into power for us, they made a very unusual explanation. Commercial loans at high interest rates have been taken for the construction of roads without following the tender process, a departure from process. For us, we mentioned when we spoke about the previous regime about the national airline. Let's move there. Now, fraud at Sri Lankan airlines. The, the current government, when they were in the opposition, promised that they will revive the national carrier, which was suffering a loss, and then put all those accountable for its losses behind bars. But we have not seen anything of that sort happening for us. Not at all. And they are yet to call for tenders for the construction of an LNG plant in Keravalipitiya. They promised to bring an end to avant-garde. Then, following these revelations, a minister had to resign as well, but he was reappointed some time later. It will take us many days, even if we are to report on these one by one, of this every single corrupt activity. It's been 70 years since we obtained our independence from our colonial masters, and yet we have failed miserably to put a stop to the scourge of corruption. For us behind you on screen are just a few people in the previous government who are linked to certain illegal activities or corrupt activities. And behind me are just a few faces that are linked to corruption allegations of the present government. For us, these are just a few. <laughs> the list goes on and we might need a few more big screens like this to put all those pictures in. Now for us, remember, you, as you said, 70 years since independence, we have failed to put a stop to corruption. Indeed. But, but and Zofik, but now some two key suspects in the bond scam have, were arrested. But where is the mastermind? And that surely is the 19 billion plus question, isn't it? Indeed, for us, the mastermind, we first had a question, what happened to that breakfast meeting? Take a look at these four individuals here. Malik, Malik Samar Samar was not a minister at that time. You but he chairman. was the chairman of the United National Party. And advisor to the Prime Minister. Absolutely. Kabir Hashim. Who was the Minister of Highways then. And? The Secretary General of the United National Party. Mr. Fine. Ravi Karunayaka, Minister in Charge of Finance. Back then. Back then. But he was also the Senior Deputy Leader of the United National and Party. And then finally, Arjuna Mahendran the controversial figure at the central bank Hand who is picked. at the center of this controversy to be the governor indeed for us for us do not forget that when the corp inquiry took place into the tre treasury bond issue chaired by sunil hadunnetti the pressure was so much on uh, mr hadunnetti that he stormed out of the corp sitting uh, the pressure mounted because several members of the corp inquiry wanted to add Footnotes to this report. Now, they are these nine personalities in parliament whom the taxpayers have elected. These individuals wanted to put footnotes to the COPE report. However, the COPE chairman himself in parliament said that there was undue pressure, but the COPE report finds Arjuna Mahendran responsible for the bond scam. Indeed. And um, today, um he presided over a press briefing and something very interesting to you say. mean Ajit, Ajit P. P. Pereira. Pereira yes the he was right one here. of those who uh, who added footnotes to the corp report of uh, chairman Sunil Handunetti let's have a listen to what interesting sentiments that he had to say 
Criminals have been arrested. The people who always said the rogues are being protected will be silenced. Yesterday it was Aloysius and tomorrow it may be the 34 names mentioned. It can be Mahinda, it can be Gotabaya, it can be Mahinda Yapa and even Gunaratna. The Presidential Commission has recommended to file cases against all those who have committed wrong, no matter who they are. The law is equal to all. There was no law during the Rajapaksa rule. Murderers and ruffians ruled the country and one of them is Aloysius, a friend of the Rajapaksas. He is not a person from the UNP. That rogue came into our government and committed a scam within weeks. From the top position to the bottom position, at the CID and the FCID, these officers have been working for justice, standing tall, providing an essential service to the nation. These, there are statements being made that the CID tipped us off about the arrest. No, we have been reporting the news for 25 long years. And that B report was produced in court. Everyone is aware what comes next is the arrest. We were closely monitoring the development and the movements because it is our duty to report the news and to explain the news. For us, we must emphasize that the police, the Attorney General's Department, the FCID and the Criminal Investigations Department are all working strong and standing tall to expose corruption and all malpractices in this country and we must salute them for their tireless efforts to expose corruption in this country. Now at a time when we see corruption and we are celebrating 70 years since independence, it sometimes feels saddening that the country has failed to eradicate corruption while many parts in the country are suffering from poverty and other uh, all forms of difficulties. The decision makers are the people because it is their ballot that counts. Action needs to be taken. It does not mean to catch the thief and send to prison. Every single cent that they have looted has to be recovered and it is time for the people to rally around a strong person who will be able to do just that. And also for us we must mention and a very important development today around the central bank treasury bond issue. S. Padmanabhan, the interdicted assistant superintendent of the EPF at the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, filed a application saying his fundamental rights were violated, but that application today was rejected by the Supreme Court. In addition to that, we are now able to confirm that the distillery, which is one of the properties of perpetual treasuries owned by Arjun Aloysius, has suspended its production of liquor following a decision taken by the excise department. 15. The Department of Excise said measures were taken to suspend the production activities of W.M. Mendes and Company Limited, which is linked to the perpetual group owned by Arjun Aloysius. The department's Commissioner General Helen Migas Muller said the decision was taken as it had not paid taxes amounting to 500 million rupees for 15 days. The excise department said production has been suspended since January, adding it would grant authorization for production once again after the surcharge of the fees paid. However, as W.M. Mendes and Company Limited has presented an appeal to the subject minister, the Commissioner General said the matter would be reviewed. It's time for the people to stand up against all forms of corruption and everyone who is corrupt. We are news first for us. We report, you decide.